Honorable Senators, there are currently three Canadians being held in Iran's notorious Evan prison, a grotesquely cruel and inhumane chamber of horrors. Of greatest urgency among them is Saeed Malikpour. His death sentence was reinstated in November 2011, and he lives each day with the prospect of imminent execution. There is also the case of Hossein Darakshan, an Iranian-Canadian blogger and journalist. He was sentenced to 19 and a half years in prison for exercising his right to free expression online. There is also the case of Hamid Ghassemi Shal. In 2009, the Iranian judiciary sentenced Mr. Ghassemi Shal to death in a trial that lasted only a few minutes. As a member of the Senate of Canada, I condemn in the strongest of terms the Iranian regime's deplorable abuse of human rights, and I call for the immediate release of the unlawfully held Canadian political prisoners, Saeed Malikpour, Hossein Darakshan, and Hamid Ghassami Shah. Honorable Senators, uh, I rise to join in the important inquiry launched by our colleague Senator Frum into egregious human rights abuses in Iran. Silence is one of the most powerful allies of those governments that abuse the basic fundamental human rights of their citizens. And that's what we're all working to combat. Senator Frum launched the inquiry by speaking of three Canadians currently imprisoned in Iran. One of these is Saeed Malikpour, a Canadian permanent resident who was born in Iran. Let me tell you a little more about Mr. Malikpour's situation. He has been sentenced to death for crimes against Islam and spreading corruption on earth, a sentence recently upheld by the Iranian Supreme Court. He is a web programmer, accused of supposedly creating pornographic websites in Iran. He maintains that he's innocent, but colleagues, even if he were guilty, which he, which he says emphatically he is not, there can be no justice when one is given the death penalty for creating offensive websites. Today I stand to bring to your attention to prominent lawyer and human rights activist Nazrin Soutadeh. Nazrin Soutadeh was arrested in September 2010 on charges of spreading propaganda and conspiring to harm state security. Since then, she has spent long periods in solitary confinement in the notorious Evan prison. Despite never having committed a justi justifiable crime, Nazrin is still in prison. To make matters worse, Nazrin Soutadeh has been denied visitors. Why? Because she refuses to wear the chador, stating that it is a violation of her rights. Honorable <coughs> Senators, I too rise to draw to your attention the plight of award-winning Iranian journalist Dr. Ahmed Zaid Abadi. Dr. Zaid Abadi is best known for his articles defending the rights of ethnic and religious minorities, encouraging political reform in Iran, and supporting the Middle East peace process. Domestically, his work has earned him solitary confinement, torture, and humiliation. The Islamic Republic of Iran has pledged under international law to uphold the freedom of thought, conscience, and expression, and to relinquish torture and degrading punishment. Why do these not apply in the case of Dr. Zaid Abadi and countless other political prisoners? Je veux aujourd'hui saluer la résilience de la communauté Baha'i de l'Iran et dénoncer le traitement qui leur est réservé dans leur pays. Si cette communauté pacifique a été persécutée depuis le tout début de sa présence en Iran, cette persécution a pris depuis l'allure d'une politique étatique officielle. Ceci inclut l'interdiction formelle de l'accès à l'éducation supérieure et à certains types d'emplois pour tous les membres de la communauté. Une personne se voit donc privée de l'admission à une université simplement parce qu'elle appartient à une communauté spécifique. Or, la communauté Baha'i est prise dans des circonstances où tout effort peut mener à l'emprisonnement ou à des attaques violentes orchestrées par le gouvernement. Honorable Senator, I rise today to express my horror of the treatment of Abdullah Momani, a student activist who was detained and taken to Evan Prison 
within days of the June 2009 presidential election. He has been sentenced to four years and 11 months in prison. Today, I join my colleagues in expressing my disgust outrage over the systematic suspension of basic human rights in Iran. I call for the immediate release of Abdullah Momani, a prisoner of conscience. Honorable Senators, I rise uh, today to condemn the Iranian regime's appalling abuse of human rights, and particularly to call uh, for the immediate release of Hamid Ghassami Shal. In 2008, he was arrested by Iranian authorities while he was visiting his uh, ailing mother. He was reportedly charged with espionage-related offenses, which he flatly denied. Iran refuses to recognize dual citizenship and has repeatedly denied Hamid access to Canadian consular officials. He has spent much of his imprisonment and solitary confinement at the notorious Evan prison in Tehran, and there is grave concern that he has been subject to torture and ill treatment which Amnesty International has documented to be very widespread in that prison. Today, uh, I'm happy to uh, join many colleagues and indeed uh, many thousand others around the world who, like Canadians, live in countries where fundamental rights and freedoms are protected and guaranteed by laws in raising our voices in appeal for the release of political prisoners in Iran. Once such the center, is Eshmatola Tabarzadi, who has been a prisoner since 2009. He is held in exile in Rajai Shahar Gohardasht prison and endures daily very harsh conditions. He is a Secretary General of the National Democratic Front of Iran. In October 2010, Branch 26 of the Revolutionary Court sentenced him to nine years in prison and 74 lashes. Colleagues, let us send a strong message of hope to all Iranians who courageously struggle daily against the tyranny of the Iranian regime and all of those who languish in Iranian jails. Honorable Senators, I rise today to join my colleagues in the Senate in denouncing the unjustifiable imprisonment of prisoners of conscience in Iran and their detention in, in unspeakable conditions. It is common for prisoners of conscience in Iran to be placed in prolonged solitary confinement and subjected to deprivations, intimidation, and torture in an attempt to extract false confessions from them. Prisoners are held in crowded conditions, lacking adequate sanitation, daylight, clean water, exercise, fresh air, and also may be denied access to the necessary level of medical care. These conditions are intolerable for any human being, but are particularly so for women whose additional needs are not met and whose children are deprived of their care. Honorable Senators, I stand before you to state that there is no fear worse in this world than the knock of authorities who come to take your loved ones loved ones who want to change conditions of their citizens. I also want to remember a Canadian, Zara Kazmi, who also lost her life at the hands of Iranian authorities. Ahmed Rumahamidjad's prison sentence and so-called crime goes a long way to show just how backwards, cowardly, and absurd Iranian justice is. Mr. Rumahamidjad suffers from multiple sclerosis, He's a sick young man. He's physically weak. He currently sits in prison without access to medical care, and according to his father, his condition is deteriorating. For associating with monarchists, this university student received a death sentence. Luckily, Mr. Rohindajad's sentence has been reduced to 10 years. I rise to draw attention to the case of Zainab Jalalian uh, of Iran. Zainab Jalalian is a young Turkish civil rights activist who was arrested in Kermanshah in 2007 and incarcerated in Sanandai prison. In 2009, the Iranian judiciary sentenced Ms. Jalalian to death without the presence of her lawyer in a trial that lasted 
but a few minutes. Her only crime is peacefully defending civil rights. Ms. Jalalian has endured months in solitary confinement and has been subjected to severe physical and psychological torture. Fortunately, in 2011, her execution sentence was changed to life in prison. Ms. Jalalian has been suffering immensely for the last five years as a result of the physical and psychological torture she has endured. Abdulfada Sultani, a prominent lawyer and human rights activist, was arrested and transferred to Evan Prison in 2011. Mr. Sultani's current situation is in a state of limbo because he has not yet been issued a prison sentence. Mr. Sultani's only crime is being a lawyer and peacefully defending human rights. Mr. Sultani is a lawyer for numerous imprisoned members of the Baha'i faith. He has been described by his followers as one of the bravest human rights defenders in Iran. Iran's human rights crisis is worsening every day. Despite the government's severe restrictions over independent reporting and monitoring, we have more than enough information to put together a clear and ugly picture. According to Sarah Lee Whitson, who is the Middle East Director at Human Rights Watch, the Iranian government crushes all voices of opposition while scoffing at the international community's growing concern over human rights. Iran's egregious system of government betrays a fear of its people. A government that spits on the rights of its citizens is a country propped up by cowardice. Honorable Senator, J'aimerais aujourd'hui vous faire part de ma vive préoccupation à l'égard de la dégradation constante de la situation des droits de la personne en Iran. Prenons le cas de Madie Golrou, cette jeune femme iranienne. Elle est une militante étudiante à qui on a interdit de poursuivre ses études post-secondaires. Le 2 décembre 2009, des agents iraniens des forces de sécurité ont arrêté Madie Golrou et son mari Valid Lalipour dans leur maison. Le 11 avril 2010, la branche 26 du tribunal révolutionnaire avait condamné Madie Golrou à deux ans et quatre mois de prison. J'invite les autorités iraniennes à libérer l'ensemble des prisonniers politiques ainsi que toutes les autres personnes citées dans le rapport du rapporteur spécial des Nations unies sur la situation des droits de la personne dans la République islamique d'Iran. Barahi Hadiat was a student activist at Tehran's University's School of Economics, an active member of the women's movement and of the campaign for one million signatures to change discriminatory laws against women. On December 31st, 2009, security forces raided her home and placed her in solitary confinement at Evan Prison. She has been charged with 16 counts, including propaganda against the regime, active participation in the post-election demonstrations, interviews with foreign media, insulting the Supreme Leader, insulting the President, gathering against the regime, and on May 19th was sentenced to nine and a half years in prison. Like the millions of young women in her generation, Bahare denies rights, has, desires rights, dignity, equality, prosperity, and freedom, and she is one of these young, passionate souls who fight to live in a just world. Thank you, Honorable Senators, I rise to speak on behalf of Habib Latifi. Mr. Habib Latifi is a young Kurdish civil rights activist and a high achieving student. In 2008, the Iranian judiciary sentenced Mr. Latifi to death in a trial that lasted a few minutes. But his only crime is peacefully defending human rights. On the ninth day of his detention, Mr. Latifi was transferred to a hospital after suffering from a kidney hemorrhage. It was later discovered that Mr. Latifi had almost died as a result of the brutal tortures he has endured in solitary confinement. Mr. Latifi is in danger of imminent execution. As a member of the Senate of Canada, I condemn the Iranian regime's deplorable abuse of human rights and call for the immediate release of unlawfully held prisoner Mr. Habib Latifi. Colleagues, I rise today to recognize the bravery of a fellow human being. Her name is Atefa Nababi, 30 years of age, a student activist and graduate student who was banned from continuing her education. She was arrested on June the 15th, 2009, during the mass arrests that ensued 
the uh, presidential elections. Atefa was arrested along with her cousin and six of their other friends at her residence. She was transferred to Ward 209 at Evan Prison, where she spent 95 days under severe physical and psychological pressure in solitary confinement. In December 2009, Branch 12 of Tehran Revolutionary Court sentenced her to four years in prison. I think it's important to also note her husband, Ali, is also in prison in Semenon since February the 13th, 2011. Honorable Senators, I bring to your attention the unfair treatment of Iranian citizen Rosita Basagi. Rosita Basagi, a member of the Baha'i community in Iran, was arrested in 2010. The Iranian judiciary sentenced Ms. Basagi to five years in prison and also banned her from leaving the country for 10 years. This sentence was increased by two years on appeal. I rise today to draw attention to human rights violations and abuses in Iran, in particular the treatment of an Iranian university student by the name of Majid Duri. Majid Duri was a starred student banned from continuing his education and was in prison on July 9, 2009. He was sentenced to 11 years in prison for waging war against God, acting against national security, and disturbing public order. He was recently transferred from Evan Prison to Bebahan Prison, a location that is 1,000 kilometers away from the residence of his parents. Majid's mother has spoken publicly about her son's prison exile, saying that he suffers from migraines, is anemic, and can't stand up for days. The Bebahan Prison lacks medical and cultural facilities. Majid recently fractured his ribs. The conditions at the prison are tragic. Honorable Senators, I rise today to speak of Youssef Nadarkhani, an Iranian Christian. Mr. Nadarkhani has lived a humble life as a pastor for a network of Christian house churches. He is an active member of the Protestant Evangelical Church of Iran. This biography would be unremarkable in a country such as Canada. However, in Tehran, Mr. Nadarkhani has been sentenced to death. The charge, you ask? apostasy and renouncing the Islamic faith. Honorable Senators, I condemn the religious persecution of Mr. Youssef Nadarkhani. In today's 21st century, individuals should be free to practice their faith and answer the call from their God, regardless of where they call home. Honorable Senators, Maba Sabet, a member of the Ba'a community in Iran, was arrested in 2008. In 2010, the Iranian judiciary sentenced Mrs. Sabet and six of her colleagues, each to 20 years of prison. But their only crime is caring for the spiritual and social needs of her Baha's community. As a member of the Senate of Canada, I condemn the Iranian regime's deplorable abuse of human rights and call for the immediate release of unlawfully held prisoner Mabar Sabet. Honorable Senators, Saeed Matinpur, an Azerbaijani journalist and civil rights activist, was arrested in 2008 and transferred to the notorious Evan prison. In the same year, the Iranian judiciary sentenced Mr. Matinpur to eight years in prison, but his only crime is peacefully defending free expression and minority rights. His crimes, according to the Revolutionary Court, were contact with foreigners and propagating against the regime. But according to his wife, he annoyed the Revolutionary Court by requesting that Iranian Turkish children be taught in their mother tongue in school and advocated for them to speak and write in their own tongue. His eight-year sentence, his wife said, is a result of his interrogator's wrath, a personal vendetta. Honorable Senators, I rise today to speak on behalf of Mehdi Owadi, an Iranian student and human rights activist who is currently serving a seven-year prison sentence in Iran. Mehdi Kodai has been detained since February of last year. He has also had to endure months of detention in solitary confinement 
Kodai was found guilty of propaganda against the regime and acting against national security by organizing gatherings. In other words, he's being persecuted for having exercised his rights to freedom of expression and freedom of movement. Honorable Senators, Mr. Kuyar Gudarzi is yet another human rights activist <laughs> being held as a political prisoner in Iran. Mr. Gudarzi was arrested on July 31, 2011 in Tehran, along with two of his friends, including his roommate, Ben Amganji, who was held in prison for eight days and committed suicide shortly after his release. Kuyar Gudarzi's mother, Parvin Mokhtar, was also arrested at her home in Kerman. His mother is held in the general ward of Kerman prison. Honorable Senators, it took three months following Mr. Gudarzi's second arrest at the end of last July for supporters to find out that he is being held in solitary confinement in Ward 209 of Evan Prison. In the past four months, various international human rights organizations, including Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and Reporters Without Borders, have issued statements expressing concern over Kuyar Gadarzi's situation. The continued silence by the Iranian regime on his current condition is inhumane. Your Honorable Senators, I rise today to support this motion and to speak about Majid Tavakali, a student leader in Iran who was sentenced to more than eight years in prison for the simple act of speaking out against the illegitimate presidential election of 2009. Majid is being held in the feared Rajai Shah prison, a hellish place in which political prisoners are housed alongside the most dangerous men in the country in unimaginably harsh conditions. This is a place that could only exist in a country that has no regard for human rights, no respect for human dignity. It's a place designed to break the bodies and the spirits of those imprisoned in its walls. But Majid is not a man whose spirit is broken easily. When given the opportunity, he continues to urge his fellow students to continue the struggle for freedom. Honorable Senators, Hossein Renagi Maleki, blogger, human rights activist, and an advocate against Cyprus censorship, was arrested and transferred to Evan Prison in 2009. In 2010, the Iranian judiciary sentenced Mr. Maleki to 15 years in prison, but his only crime is peacefully defending human rights. Mr. Maleki has endured many months in solitary confinement and has been subjected to serious physical and psychological pressure. Mr. Maleki is among Iran's intellectuals. He should be treated as an outstanding individual rather than locked up and tortured. Honorable Senators, on February 19, 2009, Shabnam Mahadazdeh, a 24-year-old Iranian student, was arrested on her way to school. I want you to imagine for a moment how you would feel as parents if that happened to your child. She was arrested for supposedly attending a party the night before. She says she did not attend. She was imprisoned for a year during the time, which time she was subjected to untold abuse and months of solitary confinement. Finally, she was sentenced to five years in prison for heresy and anti-government activities. She is being held in the infamous Evan House of Detention, or Iran's Bastille. Heartbreakingly, in April 2009, the Iranian courts issued an agreement to release her with bail. But an Iranian judge personally blocked her freedom saying that he needed to discipline her. People are routinely tortured and killed in this prison. And I want you to remember our own Canadian journalist, Zahira Kazimi, who died of blunt trauma after being arrested for taking pictures in front of the prison. In other words, she was beaten to death. An autopsy revealed signs of extreme torture. Honorable Senators, I rise today to bring to your attention and to express my profound concern, sadness, and dismay at the severe human rights abuses that are being suffered by Sehad Zia Nabavi, an Iranian student who was arrested in Iran on June the 15th, 2009. He was prevented by Iran's Ministry of Advanced Education 
from completing his master's degree in sociology after he was labeled a starred or banned student. Following his arrest, Zia was sentenced to serve 10 years in the Karoom prison in Avaz. Honorable Senators, Sayhad Zia Nababi is not simply a name or words or just another picture that appears in a newscast. He is a real live human being. He is a son. He is a grandson. He is a brother. He is a cousin. He is a cherished friend to his schoolmates. He is to each of them what our children and friends are to each of us. They are part of us. Honourable Senators, today it's my responsibility to point out the plight of Issa Saharkis. He too is a real person with a real family and with sons. Mr. Saharkis and I were born actually in the same year. And like me, he is a longtime journalist. But he is the proof that journalism can be a dangerous craft in a tyrannical and vicious regime such as Iran's. His son says that in jail, Issa Saharkis has been subjected to inhumane and violent treatment and that his health has now deteriorated. Last month, it was reported that he was chained to a hospital bed in Tehran, supposedly for medical treatment. So as a member of the Senate of Canada, I join with my colleagues today to condemn the Iranian regime's deplorable abuse of human rights, of people, and call for the immediate release of all unlawfully held prisoners, including Issa Sarhekis.